This video will show you how to do the easy mock fly zipper. It looks like a true fly zipper, but it's much easier. It's less bulky. There is no separate fly facing piece that needs to be sewn on. It's very simple to do, and you can later sew on a fly guard on the back if you would like to. Before you take your pattern off, we want to transfer some markings. It's important to transfer the circle marking. That's where the seam of the crotch ends. You could transfer that marking. That's just marking where the bottom stop is. But then the other important markings are up here. We want to snip at this 5 8 marking and we want to snip at the center front marking. If you're using a pattern that doesn't have this marking on there, then you'll want to just measure over 5 8 from center front and make that snip. Then you can take your pattern off and you are ready to do a seam finish. Well, you do it all the way down the fly and into the crotch. And you could do the serger, or I just did the overlock stitch number three on the Bernina with the number two foot. So I've got this pinned and ready to go, although I need to put another pin in about an inch and a half up from the inseam because we stop stitching an inch and a half before the inseam. Because when the pants are constructed, we sew the inseams first and then the crotch seam in that order. We're going to position the crotch area just a 5 8 line and about a half inch down from that top pin or the circle marking. We'll back stitch up to that marking. And then we'll stay at that 5 8 line to come down to that inch and a half marking. Now at this point, we don't need to backstitch because eventually we will continue that stitching. So go ahead and cut your thread tails. And we're going to take it to the iron. We're going to do a right over left mock fly, but you could do a left over right if you wanted to. But because I'm doing the right over left, I'm taking the right pant leg wrong side up, and I am finding the center front marking up here. There's my snip, and I'm finding where my stitch ended here. Smooth that out and start to create that fold and press that. This is a no basted method, a very quick method. So that's for our overlap. Now for the underlap, we're going to be on that 5 8 snip marking. So you need to get that folded in place. You can see what that amount is. Looks like an inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter. And then you will press to get that crease. That is for the underlap. Now we have the pants front right side up. We'll get the overlap out of the way. Here's the underlap. And put your zipper right side up. We want to position the bottom stop about a quarter inch above where our seam ended. So get that into place. The fold is close to the coil. Pin with the pin point towards the bottom because we will be stitching from the bottom to the top. Now notice up here that the zipper is longer. That's okay. The zipper tape can be cut off after the waistband has been sewn on. So we are going to take that to the machine. We need to switch to the zipper foot. 
for this side, we will have the needle to the far right because I'm going to stitch from the bottom up. This method is really easy to do the edge stitching. Cause notice how I can just have that lined up to the bottom edge of the zipper tape. And I'm going to go ahead and put one more pin there. The right edge of my presser foot is lining up with the edge of my fabric. We'll do a few back stitches. Take your time edge stitching so it's nice and even. Now, if your slider ended up about right in here, then you would want to open up the zipper so the slider ends up behind the presser foot so that it's not in the way of the zipper presser foot. Once you get up to the top, go ahead and backstitch. And we'll cut all our thread tails. Okay, we'll go back to the table. To do our overlap, it's really easy to get everything lined up. We know that we press this on center front and now we match it up to our other center front marking right here. We're going to have our top stitching be an inch over from our fold here. You just need to make sure that where, where you're top stitching is going to catch the zipper tape. And of course, it's going to also catch the fly facing here. So I'm going to use the straight edge of this one inch ruler to mark our stitching line until we get a little closer to the bottom. And then I'm going to switch to this template that I have made. Now, my bottom stop is down here. I really need to make sure that I do not stitch over that bottom stop. Get a nice curved marking here and then we'll blend it back. Oh, whoops. This I forgot that this template is too wide to use. There we go. Now I missed a spot up here, so we're going to come back up to the top, finish that. Once that basting tape is on there, I still come over here and pin baste, okay? You could even hand baste here if you wanted to, but I'm going to go ahead and do the quicker method of pin basting. Now, sometimes that presser foot will push your fabric up, and so that's the benefit of having pins there. We're going to stitch from the bottom to the top, just like we did the underlap. We'll come back to the machine. The needle is now to the far left of the presser foot. I'm double checking that my bottom stop is out of the way. You can choose to back stitch or pull your thread tails to the back. I'm going to choose to pull my thread tails to the back. I want my first stitch to be right there on the seam. I'm just going to hold my needle thread there. Take your time as you go around the curve. You want it to look nice and smooth. And if needs be, you can stop your needles down and gently move your fabric if you feel like you need to turn a little more sharply. Once we come up to the straight line, I'm going to line up the left edge of my presser foot to that blue line. Take your time, keep everything smooth, and if your fabric gets pushed by the presser foot, you you counter that by pulling it back down so your fabric doesn't get skewed. Our goal is to have this 
straight stitching even distance from that front uh, fold. Now, once we get closer to the top, if you had a shorter zipper and that slider's in the way, then you could stop with the needle down and you could open up the zipper so the slider is behind the presser foot. I don't have that problem because my zipper is longer. So I can continue stitching to the top of the fabric and then back stitch. <laughs> 